Trying to get everything up and running. I'm not prepared for this episode. Because as you recall in our last episode, it, it was not good. But anywho, welcome back everyone to Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, if you recall in the last episode, we helped Jiri out. Um, had a moment with her. Um, and then Sayori, and it, we went over to go see Sayori, found out she was badly depressed. And then when Yori was leaving, um, Sayori came over again and basically admitted to us that she liked us more than, um, she thought we liked her. She liked us so much that, um, she wanted to die. And... I couldn't bring myself to sit there and say, oh, I love you, because one, I don't. And two, I find it wrong to sit there and tell someone that you love them after they've told you, oh, I, I would die. I love you so much that I die. Yeah, it's along that lines. It just seems wrong. Very freaking wrong. So we're back with an episode. We're going to the festival, but we're supposed to be hanging out with Sayori, so maybe this will help her cheer up. Like, we promised her we were going to try and make her feel better. I hope we can. So, cross our fingers. Monica said something to her, because she said she she's starting to see what Monica meant. So, I want to know what Monica said. Maybe she told her that she could tell that we were starting to like Yuri. So, maybe that's what it is. Okay. Alright. I keep wondering if I should do something more or something different. My my dude. Death. I don't know if we can do more. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sarah so will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. But see, you can't sacrifice your happiness just so you can make her not be depressed. You can be there for her, but also live your own life. Alright. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. Well, maybe she's already there. But Sayori is answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but sighed that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banny banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. Not too excited. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Yeah, she's quite determined to try and let the literature club be able to shine. So I can understand it. Yokorina! You're the first one here. Wait, where's... Oh, well, Sayori might be late. But where's Natsuki and Yuri? Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. <laughs> Aren't we creative? That's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. It's true. 
I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Yokorina. Wait, what? I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. She called you? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But, I stammer, embarrassed. Okay, I didn't leave her hanging or anything. I told her that I wanted her as a friend. Did re did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? Jesus, that, well, now I feel less bad. But I basically turned down her confession. There's nothing wrong with turning down a confession. That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Yeah. I would say that gave me goosebumps. Because, like, what? How do you know more than you think? You didn't know about me until I joined the club. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our pr practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Uh, get out of my for sick code. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Constantly get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But this poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Say what? Uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Yokorina? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Ah, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Is she really... Don't strain yourself, Monaco calls out. Calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What? Why? What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sari. Tried a little bit harder on what? You were being her friend and then you started making new friends. And you come to, she comes to you. Tells you that she's suffering from depression. And you try, and she doesn't want you to make her, she doesn't want herself to be happy. She wants everyone else around her to be happy. You tell her she's, you're going to try and make her happy and stuff. And then, when you're hanging out with Yuri, she comes out of nowhere and says, and interrupts you two. And then she sits there and has, sits there and says that she wants things the way it's back before and, and how... She's so depressed, and she tells you that she likes you more than you like her, which is true. She does, it would, It seems like. But then, she sits there and says something about how much she likes you, that she wants to die. And um, you're given the option to tell her you love her, or that... um. You just want to be friends. 
You want, I picked being friends because that's what I wanted to be with her. You wanted to be friends with her. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. But the point is, she doesn't want that. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Well, what about her parents? Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Wow, I mean, these are very trusting people. They leave their doors open? Sayori! She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Oh, you mean coming here and waking her up? Even though she really didn't want to talk to us? Waking her up in her own house? Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? No, friends can do it too. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Sayori! Wake up, dummy! Yeah, we're supposed to be going to the festival together. There's no response. Maybe she's not here? I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? I mean, yeah, technically. It would be. It is, actually, because she's your friend. And, um, it's her room. But she really leaves me no choice. I mean, we could just... I don't know. I don't want to... Do I get a choice? I gently open the door. Say, Yuri, what did you do? Wait, what? File game script? See, trace back for details? What the hell? What the hell is right? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. I'm See, no, 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 no. You will not make me feel bad for not telling her I didn't love her because if she committed suicide because I did not tell her I loved her, then she needed help that I could not even fucking give her. There's no way this can be real. Sorry I wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. You were for her, for her. You just didn't tell her you loved her. I told her I know what's best for her, best, and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Making for turning down her confession. That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. See, that's where the problem is. She If she committed suicide just because we did not accept her confession, did not tell her that we loved her, she, there was nothing that was going to happen. So we had to lie to, to keep her from killing herself? Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? No. No, 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 no. Why was I so selfish? You weren't selfish. You being selfish would have been saying, Hey, I love you. And you don't. This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her. We were spending time with her. Walked her to school. We was walking her to school. And gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship. So you wanted to pretend to love her. You wanted me to lie and say that I loved her when I didn't. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. 
She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. I'm getting really tired of you. You're, you are not at fault. And now I'll carry this guilt with my, me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. Anything I say is going to come off horrible to anyone. No, your life is worth just as much as hers is. Her killing herself over the fact that you didn't love her like she loved you shows, in my opinion, her being selfish. As cruel as that comes off, it is. You're basically saying, oh, you didn't love me, so I'm dead. But if you told me I lo you love me, then I'll be fine. That's one way to sit there and trick you into loving me. That's what it makes me feel like. And that makes me come up as horrible, but it is what it makes me feel like. But I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Never we get it. Never. End. the fuck? Why is Sayori all... What, the, what, the, what is this? Start a new game? I didn't want to do that. Something, something, something. I can't read. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance. Waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is... Something, something, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know that kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of... Works out because you've known each other for so long? We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more infrequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. Wait! Sayori? But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel ba better off running away. <laughs> However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let... Insert weird text catch up to me? What? The fuck? It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups, walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. What happened? I always felt, always tell myself, it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just stay, getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. That's not true. There'd be girls, but what the fuck is going on? The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Yokarina? Ma Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. We're in... It's been a while, right? Uh... Yeah, it has. What is going on? Monica smiles sweetly. We do knew each other, while we rarely talk. But we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. This feels deja vu-ish. 
Isn't this what how I met her when in the literature club? So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for, anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to u for some supplies to use for my club. You know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> About that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit it? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A... A literature club? Why is my game freaking out? Okay, now, now we're starting to get to where it's a little creepy. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. Well, not for me. I would like it. How many members do you have so far? Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the cl club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. Well, it is. It's just... I mean, kids read picture books. Why well, can't <laughs> And that's considered reading. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides... A member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Yokarina. I have a chance. Are you still looking for a club to join? Ah. Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you'd come do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. Um. Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Easily. You tell her no. Sure. I guess I could check it out. Ah. Uh, awesome. You're really sweet, Yokarina. You know that? Thank you, I think. But haven't I been here already? It, it's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. But Sayori's the one who brought me into the club. What? And 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 she's dead, but 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 the game ended. And and then I was curious, so it started the game off and it was talking about Sayori again, but it like glitched her name out. And then it like reset it like almost like I I don't know. I don't know what's going on. My head hurts. And thus today marks the day I sh sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I dejectedly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school a rare I rarely visit. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Eh. Girl one, Yuri. Uh, a guest. Seriously, you brought a boy? Girl, too. Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Yokarina. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki, the girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first-year student. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It it's nice to meet you. I already knew your name was Yuri. Why don't I remember her? Or any of them? Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time 
keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. I've already met you two! So I ran into Yokorina in a classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica? Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Gonna be great cupcakes. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Yokorina? The girls have a few decks arranged desk arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. I... Why? Where is Sayori? So I know you didn't really plan on coming here. But, well, we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people... Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when there's something that doesn't... Something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. Makes sense. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Where is Sayori? Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the class this classroom? Don't worry. The teachers give us gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. I am definitely getting deja vu. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not true. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean, I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I, I at least... Enjoy tea? I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Yokorina, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after Yuri's sad smile. Oh, wait. Natsuki's the manga reader. That's right. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with a finger. We have been through this. This is everything in the start, but mine is Sayori. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The little creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Mary goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books. Not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can do so, can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination and completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to 
at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with the rock. Huh. I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh? Is that so? Really? If a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing up the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh. I hate horror. Oh? Why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Yes? Hello? Why are we looking at me? Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give it that back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Yes, we've been over this already. Yeah, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Well, we all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Are you going to suggest that we write poems? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. She's going to suggest we write poems and read them out loud. Let's go all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Uh... I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take the, on the responsibility of Vice President after all. No, you were not. Sayori was the Vice President. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Yokarina? Hold on. There's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bruntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. Never said I would join the club. This club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my, any decision. I still have other clubs to look at and, um, I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Uh, not so he doesn't look dejected. Yuri doesn't look dejected. The only one who looks dejected is Monica. But, but now she looks dejected. I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> eh. The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Yokarina. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. You had four. She killed herself, and now she's missing. And I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... Uh, I'm defenseless against these girls. No, you're not. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with three beautiful girls... No, these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I decided then. I'll join the literature club. I feel like now I'm being bullied. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Yogarina? Yeah. It could be fun, right? 
you really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. After what? All we did was sit there and talk and have tea. Yo, Karina, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. I just got guilt tripped into joining. Again. But in a worse way. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Except for the fact that Sayori's still missing and you guys are acting like she didn't exist. And so am I for some odd reason. Which I don't get. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Mama looks over at me once more. Yo, Karina, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. I don't care. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. And the missing Sayori. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in, the, in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. A dream. I was wandering in an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for... Um... An exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge, empty room. It's calling. It's ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My s steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing were reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Wow, that was dark. Um, okay, back to this again. Again, I'm, I liked Yuri, so she's gonna be who I'm writing the poem for. But, I don't know how to do that. So, where is Sayori? She's not even a sticker anymore! Okay. I'm afraid of pissing off Natsuki because she um got mad at me earlier.
going back to predict I didn't even walk to school this time because I'm gonna save wait where's where's my old save okay I'm saving here Saves gone. What? What is with Savory? My old save is gone. W why? <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on. Forgive me for a second. I gotta check my timer. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're calling it here. I've been given a headache. Not really. Just what? 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 What's the phrase? A mind fuck. That's that's the phrase I'm looking for. My old save is gone, <laughs> and Sayori's picture is fucked up on the screen. Like completely fucked up. Like what the hell? Okay. And they're acting like Sayori never existed. I'm acting like Sayori never existed. So, is there something new in the pictures? Or is it just that poem? No, it's just a poem. This is not the first time I played this game. Are you serious? See? Right there. Sayori. So she's still here. What? She's right there. She's in the picture as well. Right there! So why isn't she... Why is she... I don't know what's going on. She committed suicide and... Now the thing looks like this. She's like a jumbulation of all the other girls. Cause there's Natsuki in there. Yuri. And Monica. But there is nothing. It looks like nothing left to Sayori. Because. What was Sayori's eye color? Blue. Yeah. Okay. I I need to take a walk. Or, well, I need to take a break from this. Um. Uh. I was not expecting that to go that dark. So is that what it meant by the game is creepy because um, Sayori committed suicide? But but why 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 is it acting like she never existed? Because clearly she's right here. There's the picture for her. And right here's her poem! So I'm not going crazy! Her first poem, so she did exist! So why is the game acting like 
she didn't. Because there's her bedroom. Wait. Yeah. There's her bedroom. I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. Okay. I'm taking a break from this game. I'm, I wasn't prepared for that. I, I was not. So, um... Um, you all, I hope you have, um, a wonderful, oh, I just realized the new game thing is no longer jumbled out. Okay. Um. So, um, you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. I hope you enjoyed this, um. I'm trying because trying to make sense of this. I hope you enjoyed this episode as depressing and freaking confusing as it was. I thought we were going down a good path. But um I I guess not. Uh but um until the next episode I will ciao for now.